good evening, everyone. Um, I've been asked by St. Lucas to uh, to give you, to explain you a bit what you can do as an architect after you study it. Because mostly you think you can only work in an architecture office. That's for sure the most obvious. So, no, the goal of tonight is that I, I give you kind of an idea of all the possibilities you can do with a degree in architecture. To present myself, uh, I'm Natalie. I finished my studies also in architecture in 2006 in St. Lucas, Brussels. And I worked four years as an architect. And meanwhile, I'm working eight years in an uh, recruitment office that is specialized in architecture and real estate. So we help uh, professionals to find their ideal job. So tonight, the program of tonight um, is that first of all, I will try to explain you which kind of industries you can work in except architecture with a degree of architect, uh, a degree of architects, sure. Uh, second of all, I will explain you what kind of jobs you can do as an architect. The third thing is that I will uh, go through with you uh, what are the, the, how do you say, the legal ways where you can work in as an architect. Is that as an employee or as an independent? and what's the difference in salary, depending on the industry you work in. Uh, after that, I will try to explain you shortly, kind of give you a bit of, of advice. How, how do you have to apply for a job? What is important in your CV and portfolio? And last of all, I will quickly explain you a bit what we could do or what I and, and the, the company I work in could do for you. If you have questions during the presentation, do not hesitate to write it on in the Q&A, I will see it. It's, it's, it's um, also for interior architects. I will try to, to I think it's very uh, interesting for them also. And I will try to, to see that I uh, give also the scope for the interior architects. So let's start. I had to say, when I uh, finished my studies as an architect, the most obvious uh, idea was to... Um, start my uh, career in an architecture office to start your internship but um, but actually um, I realized or during the years and the work I do I realized that there are far much more uh, industries you could work in you can as I said work in an architecture firm sometimes architects are so and because now someone asked as an interior architect there are also some Architects are very, how do you say, they, they, they have an affinity to interior and details and also work in interior architecture offices. Uh, you could work, if you're interested in ma master planning, real estate, you could work more in urbanism, real estate, re if you like being on site, etc., in construction firms, engineering companies. I know architects that really work in the event sector, the, I have a friend that uh, studied with me that is that, that became scenographer. I have friends of mine that give courses that, that, that really uh, work in um, that give lessons. That's cool. You can work for the government, uh, like public authorities. So also for healthcare. To just give you an idea, for example, a, a huge a hospital um, has. Sometimes also like a real estate architecture, real estate uh, department, because sometimes in this huge building there are things that doesn't that that need to be renovated, or they they have an old in Knokke, for example, there there is an old the, there is a new hospital that has been built, but then there is really a department that works on that project from the hospital out. So that's kind of to give you an, an idea that actually you have real, really a lot of options after that you might not think of in the beginning. Then uh, I think what is very important uh, to know that, that within a um, construction project, within an architectural project, you have kind of different stakeholders. One stakeholder is the architect, the one that designs the project, but 
Within a whole project, you also have the bauer, like the client. You have the, the architect that designs what the client wants. You have the contractor that's going to build it. You have the engineering office that is going to calculate if the, the structure is doing well. And you also have project manager. And I didn't know that when I started, and it was maybe not also so my, my first idea or but uh, what I want to say is that as an architect it's actually also very possible to work um, on the side of the client I will explain it further or on the side of the contractor or the project manager um, the obvious um, stakeholder is the architect and the work of an architect in an architecture office you have really several kind of architecture offices you have architecture offices where and that's my be mostly the smaller architecture companies where you get the opportunity to design a project and to also make the, I don't know how you say it in English, uh, Lastenbuch, Meetstaat, Technische Details Tekenen, and then also do the execution and to see that it's built well on site. But in sometimes bigger architecture offices, you it's kind of more separated where you have uh, the team that designs the project and then afterwards the team that is going to follow up the execution. We see more and more also in architecture offices. I don't know if, if that one of you guys is also very uh, good or likes to work on, uh, on uh, Revit or specific software or 3D visualizations. Sometimes in architecture offices or actually less, more and more you have kind of specialists that work with BIM, Revit, uh, that do especially that. So you will see that maybe you don't know it yet now, but could be that you already have a interest for some parts of all the things you learned today. And during your work experience, you will find out, oh, what, what do I really like? What interests me more or less? The other side is actually the one who asks a question like the client who wants to build uh, something that can be a private uh, no yeah of course it can be a private client that builds a house but uh, on a bigger scales you have real estate companies that develop projects so they they buy a land plot and they uh, see the opportunity to build their really nice i don't know a service flats or flats or offices and for that and so they make kind of a feasibility and they um, are going to ask an architect to design something but uh, there are a lot of uh, architects that work on that kind of side of the that sorry for my english that work uh, for a developer and actually co coordinate and, and make the feasibility studies themselves and then it's really the architect's sure, office that completely is going to design it. So you have the developers, like the real estate companies, like the that can be a client, but uh, another client can be like the, for example, the Stad Antwerpen or the Stad Gent that, um, that says, okay, we need a new school there, uh, we have to design it, um, or, or that that kind of public buildings that need to be built. And so there are also architects that work on that side or that work at Stedebau, uh, the department that give permission, building permits. So that's another possibility. So we had architect, the client. Um, oh yeah. I want to just give you an example to make it a bit more concrete. Like this is a project from, uh, to give you an example, what it would mean to work for a client in Bauheer. I don't know if you all know the, the tour and taxi site in Brussel North. It's a huge um, site where um, we used to have uh, like the festival Couleur, and Café, Couleur Café. And the land of whole, the whole site uh, is owned by the developer Extensa. And they have all several projects on it. The first building on the right is... Uh, a public building in the Gare Maritime, maybe I show it like this, like there was an old building um, site and I like an old building where the trains uh, used to be stored. 
um, there they decided to make offices in a really uh, innovative way of using CLT, like the, the wooden, how do you say it, yeah. CLT anyway. Um, and so they are actually the owner and they are the ones that pay to be able to be built it. But working on theirs, like there are a lot of architects that work also at Extensa. And what do they have to do? Like I said before, they see on the site what is needed. So they, they see, okay, actually, we don't have a lot of uh, offices here in the neighborhood. So we're going to uh, build a, an office building and next to it service flats because there is a lot of need. What is important for that design? What's going to be the program? Who are we going to ask as architects? And actually, then you follow up the project really close by and you say to the architect, yes, we would really like an office building. For us, it's important that it's sustainable, that this and this and this, and this is the budget. Uh, and then actually what is interesting is that you don't have to draw everything out yourself or invent yourself, but you can give feedback and challenge the architects to make it even better. And afterwards, you help also to see that it's, it gets a permit at the authorities, uh, that you find the good contractors to build it up. So actually you work alongside the architects, uh, your kind of partner with them. Third possibility or third stakeholder are uh, on the contractor side. I During my studies also, I had a, a lot of students of mine. I wasn't one like that, that really loved the technique, drawing out technical details, knowing how a foundation needs to be uh, thought of. So persons that are more interested in these kind of things sometimes go to an art, to an, uh, contractor to, um, to work for them. And sometimes as an architect, you choose, you can also choose it to do it in your internship. You choose specifically to do that for a few years to be able to get a lot of experience and expertise in the technical part of, of uh, the job, um, what always can help you further on in your career. After that, I forgot to say, you have the contractor, but you also have the engineering companies. They work closely with the architect, architects. Whenever the architects uh, used to make a first uh, concept, they will be challenged by the, 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 the engineering companies are going to take a look at what they invented or uh, designed to see if it's buildable. So they are going to make calculations about uh, if is, is it right that the wall needs to be that thick or things like that. So you really have engineering, but I, I guess you guys know that engineering offices that are specialized in special techniques, in stability, but also in energy sustainability and actually i have to say last year there are more and more consultancy companies engineering companies that specialize in energy efficiency and sustainability here i give you an, an example this is kind of a, a master plan or part of a master plan for the city of antwerp in the south of antwerp there was a whole plot that was empty that was from the city of antwerp and they decided that they want to have a development of the city there, like a master plan of it. And they wanted to, to have a sustainable master plan. But as a city, they didn't know, yes, okay, but what in what does it consist to be sustainable? And they asked a consultancy company specialized in there to kind of make the Programme of Anessa or the, the briefing to say, okay, but if you want sustainable, you need... I don't know, I say something stupid with that many trees. You need this kind of warming, heating system, all these kind of things. There are more and more people who I see it in, in the projects. There are more and more peop, uh, subjects as cir circularity or uh, CLT, uh, building in wood, that all has impact on uh, sustainability. So we see that... that it gets more and more important and um, that often architects, that there are architects that specialize in that. And then the last thing that I, but I won't go too far into it, you also have project managers. So sometimes the client, uh, project managers, 
As a stakeholder or sometimes asked by the clients, imagine uh, you are someone that owns a lot of land and you want to develop there something or build there something, but you don't know a lot about uh, about the whole building process, you can ask a project manager that he does it for you. So there are also project management companies that are specialized in following up the planning, following up the, the costs, all these kind of things. This is also uh, one of the important stakeholders within a, a building process. Uh, these are... For, yeah, I will just pass through it but because it's. I, might, I think it might be less interesting. Um, and then the other thing is, so when, when I explain you the several industries, you will see that actually as an architect, you can have different roles. You've been, you can really be the designer, but you can also be the one that does the execution of does the follow-up of the, the budget and the, the cost estimations. You can be the one that, if you work as an uh, at an authority, that the uh, bepaald of the uh, op een bepaalde site op vlak van ruimte ordeling iets mag welke type functies je mag uh, ontwerpen op die sites. You could be uh, what did I want to say? You can be a professor. You can be uh, there are so many things you can do. Um, I guess that's also thing that that might interest you or maybe not yet is kind of like when you work as an architect what is the I don't know if you understand what I say with statut in, in Dutch it's, it's, it's uh, uh, I think it's clear is the fact that as an architecture office in an architecture office and as an intern mostly everyone works as an independent so you get an hourly rate and at the end and you count your hours that you've worked and then you you send your facture i don't know how to say sometimes in architecture offices they give the possibility to work in a, as an employee so that means that at the end of the month you get a fixed monthly uh, that you are on their payroll um, as an independent the in interesting thing is that you can also always do projects on the side and uh, uh, write facture for these projects too. Um, if you would work uh, on the side of the contractors, then mostly it's as an employee or as of, or if you work at a client, as I call it, or as an engineer, it's engineering company, it's mostly as an employee. Maybe one other thing that I wanted to say, because apparently there are also interior architects that I forgot to say, uh, that maybe I'm just going to quickly uh, talk about it. As an interior architect, it's kind of the same as an architect. It's not that you only can work in as an interior architect that designs and follows up interiors themselves. In a real estate company, in a company, in a development company, in a developer that kind of uh, has a land plot, builds residential projects and sells them, sells the apartments to, to owners. In this, in a real estate companies, often you have also interior architects that as soon as an apartment has been sold, will be get together with the client, with the one that bought the apartment, to see if the, the apartment, how it has been designed by the architecture offices, office, suits the needs of the owner. And if not, he or her will do some changes, uh, help the owner decide which kind of material he wants to use uh, for the kitchen, etc. But if someone has more interest in that, you can always, I, I have my mail address or you can call me, no problem. Working, like for the internship, it's possible, I think, to work six months. They call it specialized internship. And a specialized internship could be working six months for a contractor, could be working in an engineering company. Um, so indeed, that's possible. What is important when you apply? I don't know if you guys are already busy with that. Maybe you are really into your project. But uh, what is important when you apply? Preparation is everything. So when you apply and, or go on a, 
job interview, it's super important uh, to prepare yourself. What do I mean with that? Try to uh, see, get to know who are you going to speak to? What kind of project do they do? How big are they? Uh, what kind of questions do you have for them? So try to prepare all these kind of things. Um, that's what I just said. And during the in interview, of course, it's important to really focus on what, uh, what are your strengths and what you think could be interesting for them. But on the other hand, an interview, it's not trying to sell yourself, I always say. It's trying to, to know. And that's why these questions that you have are very important. It's trying to for you to get to know if this office could be an interesting office uh, for you, for, for what you want to learn, what you want to do, etc. Um, and for yourself also really knowing, okay, what do I want? No, I don't want to work in a big office because I want to do in a short period of time to see the whole process of architecture. For you to, or, or I really want to work on site to get to know that so see that you ask that in your first interview um it, it uh, that's obvious but see that you present well sometimes because i have a lot of job interviews someone comes in and he just smoked three cigarettes or one cigarette and it doesn't smell really well uh i think it's obvious um See that you have a clear CV, but we will get, I will give you some tips about advice about that. The, the question is, um, when you do an internship, can you do it as an employee or as a freelancer independent? Actually, it's always as an independent. Yes, because yeah, for the order of an architect, it's needed that you're an independent, uh, that you have an independent statue. About your CV. Um, I also have my mail address at the end. Or we can see how we, we arrange it, or I, I, I can go more in depth in an, in, at another time about that. But no, what I wanted to say is I have my mail address and my phone number at the end. Don't hesitate to write it down and send me your draft CV you have, and then I can give you specific advices. But what is important in there, it's know that it's a first impression. I have a lot of people that try to be very creative, and, and of, I see a lot of CVs. There are a lot of colors, but actually it really doesn't, it doesn't give a clear glimpse of, of who you are. So be structured, not too conceptual with colors and, and it's really the, um, how do you say the in out like what you say that it's important or what you write or how do you present yourself more than the layout and the colors. For the portfolios, sometimes we get portfolios where they start with, okay, this is the first little project I did in my first year. And then afterwards I did this, this, this. It's more, really try to, to take your four best projects. Maybe you start with your last project and then your final thesis or project. Because if not, you, you, you lose the attention of the person who looks at it and you really kind of have to focus about this is what I cannot. This is everything I did. Wait eh? one second. I don't know. Uh, what else what did I wanted to say about the portfolio? Always good to start with a really good project and to end with a good project. The other thing that I want to see about the portfolio is sometimes people have then you know, like one page with all text about the concept of their project. What is really important in a portfolio or for architecture offices is show them a technical detail that you've drawn. Show them um, a section that you made. Show them maybe a sketch by hand. All these kind of things that they really see what can you do. Uh, maybe except for a very uh, conceptual architecture offices where the concept, uh, etc., is very important. But you really have to see for what kind of architecture office your portfolio is meant to be. Yes, and then, and then the structure of, um, of your CV, maybe I just show it here. What is always important, first of all, of course, in putting the, um, the contact details, your address, always very important. We always suggest to, we call it kind of an elevator pitch. And that is actually, so under your contact details, try to write in two, three words, who are you? What are your strengths and what are you looking for? You might say, oh, we put that in a motivational letter, but I suggest to also put it in two, three sentences in the CV because the CV is mostly the 
the paper or the document that they print out, and then they have immediately all the info. I give here an example. Uh, imagine if you say, yes, I'm an architect, uh, and I languages are always pretty important. So if you're um, bilingual or if three languages, put it in there. If you are very interested in uh, stability or in uh, master planning or bigger projects, put that in. That's important. Your academical, professional career, also important. You don't have to put middle by school, you know, like, I don't know how you say it in English, but lager onderwijs zo daar, middle by was daar. I mean, you can tell schrijven, maar dat mag heel kort zijn. And then your professional career, write it. Yeah, actually for you it won't be a lot, but imagine if you had a first in little summer traineeship or something, write it down. And during your years where you get more experience, try to always do it anti-chronological. Anti so you always put your last work experience first. I, did I put it there? Yeah. What is always good is also to put, because of course you guys don't have so much input that you can put in your CV, put uh, the, the subject of your thesis or of your last, I don't know, two essential projects you worked on or you de designed. Also important if you are in, uh, how do you call it, students, as you as in a student committee bent, or you're involved, uh, how do you say it? Maybe a bit stupid to say, but actually it, it kind of works. Like if you are involved in scouts, in a kind of, it means that you're kind of someone organizational proactive. Uh, if you're in the committee of the students or something, put it in there too. Uh, software, languages, etc. Okay, I hope it was a bit clear for you. It's my first time that I did... Uh, this kind of presentations. It's a bit weird not to see your faces. Uh, two, three words about me and about Archibald. I work since eight years at Archibald. In Archibald, we are actually a recruitment company spe specialized in architecture and real estate. We exist since 2012, no, 2008, I'm sorry. And we are all architects uh, and we help actually you guys to find a job but we help also architecture companies or real estate companies or other stakeholders to find the good profiles so if at some point now you have questions about your internship about where should i do it or actually i would like to uh, study something more what could be interesting if in the future i want to go in this direction uh these are all questions i i and we can help you with um so don't hesitate to uh, mail me, call me, uh, whatever you want. I think on our website, www.archibald.be, you can ask for the newsletter that you get. And so that means that once a month, you get kind of a newsletter with all the latest job offers that we have. Of course, it's not only junior uh, profiles, but also senior. For example, currently I'm looking for, for junior architects that are kind of in, interested also a bit in real estate, in uh, not only about the design and the construction of a project, but how, how can it be paid? How, how, what's the business plan behind it? So anyway, if you have... If you're already busy with what you're going to do next, uh, I'm always available. And maybe from now on, uh, that's it. I see that are, there are a lot of questions, so I'm going to try to res respond on them. So if you have more, don't hesitate to, uh, to put them in there. I'm going to see that I got all the... Is it easy to find English-speaking architecture jobs in Belgium or speaking Dutch is really important? Actually, speaking Dutch or French is really important. It's not a must if you have other really really great skills that other don't have. It might be less important, but yes, if, if uh, an architecture com company has two persons that has the same skills, but one speaks Dutch and French and the other only English, of course, it seems obvious to me that the person that speaks more languages has more chances. So I will also suggest you to, uh, depending on where you want to work, um, to follow courses now with the webinars and things, I think it's possible. 
at least to show the officers that you're willing to speak the other language. Of course, there are some international architecture offices where it might be a bit less important. I know B2AE, Jaspers and AIS, you know, like these kind of bigger offices, they have quite some international interns. Um, I wanted to say something else about that. The thing is also why languages are important is that if you speak Dutch and French, you will be more quickly, you will get more quickly the possibility to, to also go to a client, to, to go on the, on the execution side so that you can talk to the contractor. So that's why it's kind of important. Is it better to have a PDF portfolio or a website? I personally prefer a PDF. Why do I prefer a PDF? It's just that you decide which projects I see first. If not, I don't know, I've, I've never done a website, but then you have to really think through what is the person who's going to see next. For me, I really love that someone makes another important tip for the portfolio. Put Make it um, horizontal so that it's the screen of the of your laptop or computer uh, so that you can easily put it full screen because I, I really like PDF because you scroll through it, you go back, you go forward really quickly. So I would suggest you PDF. I see more and more young people that also do websites. Actually, I think it's also a good thing, but I wouldn't only give a link of a website when I apply somewhere. Good question, Margot. Margot asks, I would like to work for a contractor, but are they willing to hire interns for such a short amount of time? My God, this is, will all be depending. Uh, you, it's a good question. Of course, maybe you should do it in after one year and a half that you worked in an architecture office. I don't know. Anyway, interns, I, I will say it like it is. Interns are not expensive. If you are a person that is willing to learn a lot, is engaged, it won't be a problem that they, that they, you know, like architects really has something to offer to contractors. So I don't think it should be too, too much of a problem. A photo, is it recommended in a CV? Some people say that for me, it's not a must. Some people say you're not allowed to do that or that it could be di discriminative. But for me, for me, as a, a photo, is sometimes interesting because it's not about how they look like or not, how you look like or not. It's more about how do you present yourself? If you're someone that says, oh, I put a picture of me when I'm uh, surfing, at the, uh, surfing or uh, sitting at the beach, it says something about you. It's not about how you look like on a picture. So for me, I actually sometimes like to have a picture some, some people put pictures and it's really a decent picture. It's like, kind of like this. You look in the, and it kind of says something. So it can be, but it's not a must. Volunteering and workshops, of course, can be part of your CV. Really, I think for you guys, you don't have that much work experience. So put all the things that you think that are relevant workshops. Uh, maybe, I don't know how it's working out uh, these days, but maybe webinars you followed or things like that. For sure, put it in there. The Orde van de Architecten. Can you tell me more about the Orde van de Architecten? What are the requirements? Does previous work experience outside of Belgium count towards the two-year internship period? Yes, ex uh, international ex previous experience could count, I think. No, it couldn't count. Retro uh, retros blah, blah. I, don't, I don't know how to say it. The thing is, so specialized internship, it can be, or you can work at a contractor, or you can work abroad or do the two, I think. So it's maximum a year that you can do specialized internship. The thing is important, you have to present it to the Orde van Architecten and they decide if it's okay for them or, or not. The Orde van Architecten, they just want to see that you did two years of internship, that you learned, that you got bit of the scope of your work experience. I don't know if there is another question about the Orde van Architecten. Is it possible to find a part-time job in architecture? Yes, it is, but it's while well, I'm still studying it. Yes, for sure. That's for sure possible. 
if you if you have good skills, if you have good competences, no problem. I don't know. Any advice on the timing for applying for an internship? For example, how much in advance do you send in your documents? Is it easy to communicate? What I always advise is when you apply the scope and you 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 see somewhere a job offer that interests you, you try to find out to whom you have to send it. Uh, if you see a job offer on the internet, and you have a mail address and everything, you send your CV, your uh, portfolio, etc. And I will always suggest three, four days later. For me, it's not being too harsh or too much behind it. I suggest to uh, call, call them and say, did you got my CV and portfolio well? And then, so... Because if not, you're sometimes waiting two, three, four, five weeks. Some some architecture offices or offices don't reply because they get too many applications. Why is that good? So you call them to check if they got your application. And so they think of you. They, oh, yes, I still have to check the mailbox for this. And then when they see your name, they will think, ah, oh, this is a person I they called. Why is it also good to call them after four days? Then you can ask... How far are you? When do you think you can take a look at the um, architecture? Um, um, I see there are still some questions, but I propose that you send them by mail to me. I hope you still all have my mail address, but I guess so. Um, I can't write it. Anyway, natalie at archibald.be for if you have other questions. Um, have a nice evening. Bye-bye.